and it looks like we are live how is everybody uh so right i am going to be turning a uh, a bowl out of um sapili or in some places uh people call it african mahogany uh quick uh quick piece of um uh notes i've got written down here um first of all dan everything uh you need to know about today's uh make a fair um is all down in the description uh there's a raffle going on uh links down to that is all down there as well uh easy are going to be giving away some tools and some hats and some shirts and all that good stuff uh the links to everybody that's participated in this show is all down in the description there was uh cole's been on jim overton's been on and of all trades has literally just finished. So make sure you go back and check them out. Um, I'm obviously on now. Uh, straight after me is Mr. Scott Grove, then Zach Higgins, uh, Daryl from Dreadnought Woodshop, and then back with Carl. So be sure to check them out as well. So uh, in the background, I've actually got a couple of earworms, believe it or not. I have uh, Dale from Maple Tree Studios and uh, Wayne from... Uh, well, Wayne the Woodturner. So, if you want to introduce yourself, guys. Good evening. How's it going? After you. There you go. So, do you want to, uh, do you want to let everybody know where people can find you? And I'll uh, I'll go and go over to the lathe and get set up. No a couple of links in the find chat. Me on, um, find oh. me on Wayne the Woodturner on YouTube. Wayne the Woodturner 2 on Instagram. And Wayne the Woodturner on Facebook. There we go. Uh, you find find me on Maple Tree Studios on YouTube, uh, Maple Tree Studios and Facebook, and Maple Tree Studios on Instagram. Nice, nice. So here we go. We've got the a piece of sapili, like I said on the lathe. Going to get it up to speed. It's going at about eighteen hundred, a little over that uh, revs at the moment. So here we go. Let's start turning. Gonna keep a nice little um, foot on this so I can remount it back on the lathe a bit later. And in the chat at the moment we've got John McElroy uh, and he, he, um we've seen good morning. Uh, obviously good Dale morning. Robin's here. Hi Robin, Brian Anderson, Hello, Robin. Uh, Richard Elston, Doug Miller. Oh, yeah. So we're just, just making it round. Doug Miller, moment. Stephen Moore, uh, Steve Ellis, Minigard Canales, Joe yeah. Helm, sorry, Dustin Helm, um, John PBH, Hello, John. Michael McEwen, Hi, uh, Mike. Christy, Hello, Christy, Carl, Hi, Jordan, Carl. Bob Lapsley, Chris, Mike Doyle. Good afternoon. Tommy Dunn. Oh, good morning. Amy DeAngelis. George Yarn. Henry Morgan. Zach Zinn. Afternoon, Zach. Hello, Zach. You're right. Uh, Richard Phelan. Eric Shiplett. Doug. Alex, Michael McEwen, No Crusher, Paul Kavanagh, Hello, Greg, Michael Williams, Ellen Meadows, Mark, Jack Branson, What's that? No, no, he's Andrew Mortimer, James Coates. Mike. Right, that's it. We're down to the end at the moment. Okay, mate. Thank you very <coughs> much. So if anyone's got any questions, how many, sorry? 121 watching. Nice. It's got to be some sort of record. So if anyone's got any questions uh, out in the chat, then feel free to ask. I'll try my uh, try my best to answer it. Um, since it's only a small bowl and these easy wood tools seem to be cutting it like a hot knife going through butter, we may even be able to get two bowls done. So who knows? Who knows? Also got Andrew Mortimer in, uh, James Coates, Eric Noble, W. Bradburn, Emmett. Hello, Emmett. Robert Love. 
Kim Thomas. Oh, Jim's in. Jim's in stuff. Hello, Jim. Nice live you did earlier, buddy. Well done. Soap Lady 52. Hey, uh, Zach's busy doing stuff. Right, let's change that camera to a uh, a down uh, a down view. There we go. And then let's get. Actually, no, I know what I want to do. I want to get that this tool first. I want to get that tool, the detailer. No, I don't need that. Right, there's, there's, been, there's, there's been there's been a couple of questions in. Okay, go on. Um, what lid are you using? What lid am I? I am using the Record Power Coronet Herald. Folks, can you prefix your question with the word "question," please? Um, so we make sure you're asking JP um, and not just talking amongst yourselves. <clears throat> okay, Amy asks, thanks. "What?" Got you started in woodwork, Jamie. Woodwork or wood turning? Woodwork. Woodwork. So, what got stopped me in woodwork? So, my dad used to work on um, uh, building sites or construction sites if you're from the US. And uh, uh, I'd always like that sort of thing. Um, and, but for some reason, I just got attracted to wood rather than metal. And yeah, that, that's basically it. Um, on to, uh, I, I was kind of known for the scroll saw and that got was Sterling Davis put out a puzzle piece coaster video. And, uh, ever since then I was like, I need to get a scroll saw, uh, wood turning was Martin Sabin Smith made a, um, it was, I think he called it golden fire. It was the original one that he did. And after that it was, I need to get a lathe. So, yeah, that, that's that's kind of my story. So, okay, as you can see, I put a, uh, a little uh, detail line in there. Now, what I'm going to be using here is a the Easy Wood Wire Burner. Now, a lot of people make these online, um, but unfortunately for them, this one hasn't, their ones haven't got Cole Jacobson signature on it. So, yeah, you need one of these ones. So, yeah, so you get it up to speed. And the best thing about this is it comes in different ga different size gauges, obviously quick release, and they come in different length wires as well. So you just hold it in the groove, wait for it to start smoking, and release. And definitely do not touch that wire um, after you've turned it, after you've burnt it. Don't ask me how I know that. A couple of fun questions out in the chat. From well, Michael Williams, what do you use, what do you use to sharpen your chisels? What do I use to sharpen my chisels? Um, I I use a company called Yandles, and I get replacements. <laughs> um, uh, Dead Rise Woodcrafts <laughs> asks, "Who's your favourite mate in the US with Dead Rise in their name?" Uh, oof. well, that's a tough one. I know. Ask him if he knows oh. anyone. Um, okay, we'll probably do that. Did, probably um, that wood graphs. Is anyone not going to think sure. of one? Uh, Robert Lance say, asks, is the lathe really quiet, or have you got a great audio setup? Can't hear the lathe at all. I have got a very great audio setup. Um, I am using uh, a Jabra mic. I can't remember, is it, is it Jabra 6, Dale? Jabra Evolve 65. 65, yeah, there we go. It's no it's got great noise cancellation on it. So they're, they're, not, they're not the cheapest microphone uh, headsets in the world, but by golly, they are worth the money. However, the, however, the lathe is really, really quiet anyway. So yeah. Let's just get that turned yeah. down as well. Chad yeah, from Mancraft uh, is in. Says hello. Mr. Mancraft. We'll <coughs> yeah, we've got Chris uh, Western in. Greetings from South Africa. New to your channel. Look, Looking forward to learn here as a new wood turner. Nice. Welcome to the channel. 
Braxton Whistling is in. Hello, everyone. He sent an alarm for calls. He sent an alarm for calls demo this morning. Slept through it. Oh, I wouldn't have admitted to that. Don't worry. Carl is on again later on. I believe it's 4 p.m. Central Time. So. I think people are going to like this, especially Carl, all this sanding. So, so if I'm anybody I'm has come in late, if you go further down in the video into the descriptions, GP has put links in to everybody else that's on with the times in there as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, obviously, uh, like I said, uh, right at the very, very start, Easy Wood have got a, uh, a raffle going on. They're giving away some tools, uh, some T-shirts, some hats. So, yeah, uh, be sure to go into that. That ends midnight tonight, um, central time in over in the States, or 6 o'clock tomorrow morning for people in the UK. So there's, there's plenty of time after the all the shows have ended for you to enter. So, yeah, go over there, click that link, and good luck. Deals just put a link in for the uh, for the raffle. Anna's in. Hi Anna. Nice. Hi Anna. Right. So this one here. What is this? It's one eighty grit. This is this abernet. I like using Abernet because once it fills up with sawdust, you can just flick it out. So yeah, I'm not gonna not gonna sand it all perfectly because I haven't really got that much time to be honest. So yeah, right. I think I'm gonna have to put a new dovetail on that. Hundred and fifty nine watching. 44 Hello, thumbs, everybody. folks. 159 watching. Uh, 44 thumbs, folks. If you like what Jamie's doing, please, please, please hit that thumbs up. It means a lot. Hello, everybody. It's good to have you all over. All right. This, uh, Rubber this Love is asking a question. What okay, is the good. highest grit you normally use when sanding? So I only ever go up to 240 grit. And uh, the reason why is because I use an abrasive paste called Yorkshire grit. Um, so, yeah, so you, you, what you do with that is you, you sand up to, uh, sand, all you need to do is sand up to 240 grit. And uh, you put on the Got some sanding sealer, then go to um, Yorkshire grit, and that will take it up to about a thousand grit after you've finished using that. And after that, you've got a choice of using a Yorkshire grit microfine, and um, that will take it up to about two thousand grit. So, yeah, <coughs> now what I'm going to do is struggle to reach up onto the shelf and i'm going to get some methylated spirits as you see it's purple over in the uk so no wally drinks it must love woods asking a question what is your Go preferred on. sanding sealer what's my uh, much preferred so it, it kind of mm. varies really it kind of varies whether i do um uh, coloring or not um normally i use cellulose um, but if I do sanding, uh, not if I do sanding, if I do um, colouring, uh, like if I use spirit stains, then um, I would probably use uh, acrylic sanding sealer for spirit stains, um, but water-based stains, I'd use cellulose sanding sealer. Um, and, and, and I normally would use chestnuts sanding sealer for that, uh, the spray stuff. So... But I've, I've had some uh, sand and sealer, uh, cellular sand and sealer in a bowl for quite a while, some Liberon uh, for quite a while. So I have got some chestnut sand and sealer up there, um, but I'm going to finish off this bowl because like I've had it for far too long. 
So, Quite <clears throat> question from the colonies from Eric Shiplett. He asks, "Why do you like Yorkshire grit? Why do I like Yorkshire grit? Um, to yes. be honest with you, I've I've only ever used uh, Yorkshire grit. It was the first abrasive paste I ever used, and I love the the finish it gives. And um, I mean, to be honest with you, it, if if you was to ask Glyn, who is the owner of Yorkshire grit, if uh, if he can use it as a finish, he he'd probably say." I don't know, yes or no. I'm not really sure what you would say, to be honest with you. But me personally, I've, I've, I always use it as a finish because there's so much beeswax in there. Um, and if anyone else, if I was to decide to sell any of my pieces, I would then probably give the person the option of, well, what would you like to go in? Uh, what would you like to go on top of it? Like, would you like an extra wax? Would you like some oil? Anything on top of that? So even though Yorkshire grit, um, isn't technically a finish um i've always used it as one so but uh, um, I have going, a... going back i, I would I've, i just love the finish it gives to be honest there's with a you. request from carl jacobson uh yes. carl asks can you please clean out my sticker it's dusty <laughs> how's that <laughs> uh, <laughs> w Brad Bunn asks, is there or what is the difference between Yorkshire Grip Microfine and Hamster Sheen? So Hamster Sheen is a finishing wax and Yorkshire Grit is a an abrasive paste. So Yorkshire Grit will uh I, I don't know if you'll be able to how well you'll be able to hear it because obviously the mic uh, I've got this microphone is well pretty good and noise cancelling. But what Yorkshire Grit is is it's a sanding paste. And or an abrasive paste so when you put it on it's got real real fine grit inside of it so um what oh, there's a big chunk of it there and it's got real fine grit inside of it and as you sand with it the grit breaks down and gets finer and finer and finer and as you as you're sanding like i say it gets finer and finer and finer and it, it's basically sanding and because it's got beeswax in it it also polishes it at the same time so you, as you're as you're saying that you can you could probably hear it going, but actually the, the more you sand it, the less you'll be able to hear that kind of gritty um, gritty noise. But Hampshire Sheen comes in different forms. You get I think you get original, um, uh, high gloss wax and microcrystalline wax and yeah. So Hampshire Sheen is a finishing wax as opposed to a an abrasive paste. So uh, Hampshire Sheen and um, Yorkshire Grip go well together. Uh, I think they were called uh, the partners in Shine, I believe, weren't they, Wayne, at some point? Yeah, one point, yeah. So, yeah. We've got Ian in the Sheds just come in. And Manic Mick has come Ale in as well. Sorry, Wayne. A question from Alexandro. Uh, what's your favourite Hampshire Sheen product? My favourite Hampshire Sheen product. Oh, that's a tough one. My favourite Hampshire Sheen product. Um, as opposed to the colours, I really like the, the microcrystalline wax. Uh, the microcrystalline wax is really uh, works really well. It's it's kind of it stops uh, a lot of fingerprints on the final piece. So yeah. Um, but like I said, I really like Martin's colours as well. Right. John PBH has asked me a question. Do okay. Yorkshire Grid export to the US? Yes, they do. Uh, you can yes. get it from Walnut Log. You yep, can also Jeff's get it at, um, yeah, that's Jeff's place. You can also get it um, in a place in Texas as well. Uh, the name of it has just gone out of my head. If you go to uh, yorkshire-grit.com, uh, I'm sure all the details will be on there. Yeah, he exports to about 17 countries now, Glenn does. Yeah. So, all right, let's get, get this done now. It's nearly done. So, normally I use about three pieces of uh, tissue paper for this to get this off, but normally in the in the editing room it doesn't, doesn't normally take this much because obviously I'll cut a lot of it out. James Garwood says it's looking good. So, 
Yeah. I know the thing with Glenn is this. If you were to say, is that Yorkshire Grip food safe, he'd probably, he, would, he would say no. Um, me personally, I, I would say yes. Because all that you're doing is is you, you wipe off uh, the Yorkshire Grip off of the bowl or whatever the piece that you're making until you have a totally clear piece of paper towel, which basically means all you've left on there is beeswax. And of course, beeswax is food safe. So, but obviously, you got to listen to the owner, really. So, I don't, I don't, I've never sold a piece and claimed it to be, see, nothing left on there, well, for that corner, but that's where I folded it over. So, yeah. Right. And there you go. So, that's why I like Yorkshire Grip. See that? So, let's get this, uh, let's get this spin round, or spun round. Right, Dustin said he loves the look of Sapili, and Amy has said, I can't, be, can't believe how quick it's gone to this stage. I know, right? That's a joy as a carbide. It, they, I mean, they cut, they cut through wood like a hot knife down through bar. I mean, I'm not saying that uh, gouges don't, but I mean, they, yeah, they're, yeah, they work great. Fun question from Emmett at Dead Rise Woodcrafts. Question, Jamie, who's joining your tattoo next? Who's joining my tattoo next? Mm. Uh, what you mean, the maker leg? I feel it's your maker leg is what we're talking about. My maker leg. Um, I think Sterling Davis has got to be on there somewhere. I think so. And he was one of the... He was the, the guy... I, know, I did promise him as well. I promised him when I went to Atlanta that he would be on there somewhere. So, yeah. Let's not try to make it... Let's not try to keep it to scale. Otherwise, it'll, because... Because, because oh, yeah. he's big, you'll fill up all your leg. <laughs> I've also got to get a. I've also got to get a tattoo of uh, um, the trip that Carl and Robin and myself and Vicky went on, kind of commemorating that. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a beaver wearing a cowboy hat. So holding the turning chisel because we drove from Texas to Oregon in the <coughs> RV. So, yeah. Right, now we're going to go so, to my Rax, favourite tool. Raxton, Raxton has just given you a, a super chat. Uh, $4.99. Here's money for a Braxton tattoo. A Braxton tattoo. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Right, let's change the, the camera to the tail stock. And start doing Carl the offers the view. Following. He says you're going to need a bigger leg. We're going to need a bigger leg. Beavers aren't that big, are they? Surely. Right, so <clears> this <throat> is this is my, my favourite tool. I don't know, and don't call me Shirley. <laughs> well, it's right, so this, is the, uh, this is a number one hollower. Um, yeah, this is I'm not going to say arguably my favourite tool. Oh, my favorite. Jen's in. I just missed Jen coming in. Good afternoon, Hi, Jen. Jen. So, yeah, this is the, the CI5. So, actually, let's move that out a little bit. There we go. Two hundred and twenty-two watching, Jimmy. Hello, everybody. All them shavings are hot. Hodgepodge Woodworks offers an insight. He, uh, he, she is saying that an average beaver weight is 24 to 70 pounds. What was that, sorry? Uh, Hodgepodge is offering the insight that an average beaver weighs 24 to 70 pounds. Ah, did not know that. You, you can probably see why this is my favourite tool. About how quick it's going through this wood. 
is the audio okay while I'm doing this? Perfect, mate. Absolutely perfect. Nice. Because I have all day that I join the funnel club. Question from Must Love Wood. At what speed did you say you were turning the inside? The inside at the moment is uh, I'm running the laver at uh, 1868 RPM. Steve Bowers is asking if you can offer an ongoing commentary of what you're doing and tips for using the easy wood tools. So, yeah, uh, so obviously, um, as you see, I'm just hollowing it out at the moment. So tips for using the easy wood tools is uh, kind of, it's kind of plain and simple, really. Uh, so I don't know if I've got one. Yep, yeah, there we go. Let's, let's turn the camera, uh, turn the label up a minute, and I'll kind of show you and switch cameras. Uh, let's switch cameras back to this one. All right. Actually, is it on one of the others? Just have a look. Yeah, there we go. Just get, grab that one instead. All right. So this is the uh, circle one. All right. So so when it comes to the tools, right, you, uh, the tools come with a, a little sticker on them as well. All right. I don't know where you can see that. It tells you how far over the bar is the maximum overhang. Okay, so you know never to go. If you're going over too far over there, you know you you're kind of pushing it pushing it its limits. All right. Um, when you're doing it, you hold hold it flat on the tool rest, and you hold it parallel to the ground. All right. There's no need for twisting. It will cut perfectly as it is, perfectly flat. All right. Um, you hold it, hold it so that the tip is dead on centre, and then you just just keep riding it and just keep going back and forth until you you, you get the desired shape or you've uh, hollowed it out to where you want it. it it's kind of kind of real simple, really, when it comes to using carbides. Um, there's not really much of a, there's obviously a learning curve using all tools, but um, it, it's kind of a is with carbides, it's it's almost a case of watch a couple of videos and you, you kind of know roughly what you're doing. Is as long as you know not to be a little bit of an idiot, you, you kind of you kind of know where, what to do, really. You know, I mean, I I, I bought a lathe and I don't know about four years ago, I think, and I basically as soon as the lathe turned up, I was turning using carbides. You know, so yeah, I mean, if I if I was a Get another lathe and go all back. Start again. I, I would no doubtedly, undoubtedly start with carbides again, because it, it's one of them things that you could, if you want to get into turning. That there's, there's obviously a big, big learning curve with um, gouges and things like that. Um, not to say that it's that's a bad thing if you want to get into using them, but if you want to get into turning faster and start turning stuff faster then for me carbide is definitely the way to go so yeah all right let's <clears> get to doing some more sanding john pbh offers this advice he says be careful jp we don't want a live funnel club demo oh no i think i'm going to leave it there for the that sanding that sanding may that's, offer that's, maybe better to change the camera angle Oh, yeah, sorry. Good thinking, Batman. There we go. Boom. Boom. In, in case people have never met him before, that's that's Jaffa. That's a shop... Uh, that's a shop <coughs> master. What's well, news in the house? Good evening, Hugh. Hey, Huey. 
and Arancadeso as well. What's the, what's the time like, guys? Uh, we're just You're getting on half past six. In. Sorry? We're 30 minutes in. Wow, was that it? I think I've got enough That's time it. to do another one. You're going to be taking Wayne's uh, crown off from here, this right? Yes, I know. Like. Shall I go for free then? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, what am I looking for? I'm going for methylated spirits, or as the people in the US call it, denatured alcohol. Right. So let's get some out on the inside. Oh, Barry's in as well, and Barry has just made a donation of £1.99. Thanks, Barry. Appreciate it. Bonjour, Jean-Pierre. Hockey, hockey, hockey. Bonjour, Jean-Pierre. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, bro. I'm surprised you could see that. Are you sure it's Barry and he's not just showing his forehead in the chat? <laughs> right, let's get that done. Alexandro was asking, is he going to have enough time to turn a second ball? Ah, oh, yeah, easy. I won't put any, uh, won't put any special decorative features on the next one. You'll see. You'll see. Hey, Doug, so there's a couple of few questions coming out here. I'm glad I'm here, um, I think. Oh. Question from Eric Shiplett. Um, how do you... Sorry, what did you just put on the ball? So I just put um, some uh, methylated spirits or denatured alcohol on it then just to clean out the pores so this is uh, Yorkshire grit I'm putting on again for the inside so you put that on uh, sort of label uh, off get it going in rub it in William Kowalski asked, do you wear a face mask? I am wearing do, my face um, mask right now, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I think uh, William uh, GP has got the Honeywell face mask. Yeah, I've got the black one, yeah. Uh, I've yeah. got it from Ed Oliver, Oliver's Wood Turning. And Mr. Jacobson has given you a super chat. Just want to throw two pounds sterling your way. Two pounds sterling. <laughs> Thank you very much, Carl. I appreciate it. The Manning Maker has said, good job, buddy. And he's sent you a super chat. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, I've got to be honest, I was a little bit nervous for this one. It's only my second live. And I've done my, uh, my first one a few days ago. So... Uh, would this make you more nervous? You have 306 watching. Oh, cheers, Dal. <laughs> no worries, mate. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, welcome, well. everybody. I mean, <laughs> who needs enemies when you've got friends like Dale, eh? Mate, I'm just helping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Radio. Let's get a finish up with this Yorkshire grit. Right, it's almost off. Uh, Robin, Robin is suggesting that you're doing great, Jamie. Thank you very much, Robin. Right, we've got uh, uh, Hamida Basley in and also Steve Blinkhorn as well. Hello, everybody. And Stan G. Um, Young John PBH is saying, you're doing a Beezer job, mate. 
Nice. Right. A bit of a slow mo of the lathe and just get that last bit of residue off. So if you went nervous before, how does 330 grab you? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh dear. Radio. That's uh that's that one done. What's what are we looking at for time? Yeah. You're you doing go. really well. You're 18.35, so 35 minutes in. There you go. There's that bowl with a, a burnt rim on it uh, using the Carl Jacobson wire burner. Available at all easy with tools at uh, retailers or outlets. Right, Alex has just given you a $5 a super chat, and Emmett is giving a $1.99. Great job. Thank you, you very much. I appreciate that. Right, let's start on another yep. bowl now. Try and beat Wayne's record. Yeah, this is a, a small piece of babinga that I've got here. So I've already got it. Babing, babinga. Babinga. So let's get this. Um, Amy is asking a question. What's the oh. worst wood turning injury you've had, Jamie? My worst wood uh, wood turning injury. Yes. So that started. Um, I've actually had. Uh, an injury and a very, very, very close call. So, oh, uh, oh I don't mind telling. <laughs> so, this mm -hmm. happened on my very first ever lathe. Um, it was a, a small midi lathe. And what happened was, was I, I put a, a quite a rather large chunk of wood on top of it. And um, it was not, it wasn't a bowl blank or anything like that. It was a proper log. And, um, I've got a big catch on it, and uh, it obviously wasn't mounted properly. Uh, it was just between centres, and uh, this lathe was just enough powerful enough for it to fire it up into the air, for me to turn around and look and say, where the hell did that go? And for it to come down and clunk me straight on the top of the head. Luckily, I was wearing a face shield, obviously. Why wouldn't I be? But even so, it was still enough time for me to go, hmm, okay, where did that go? And then, donk. Shot on the top of the head. Is that so, the one where the iPhone wound up in the bucket? No, 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 no that's not that one. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that was, that was an injury because it, I didn't get hit by that. That narrowly missed me. So there's actually a video on that. Um, I didn't put the, I actually edited that bit out. But my, yeah, my iPhone, I couldn't find my phone, and it, uh, a bolt came flying off the lathe and uh, disappeared into the mop bucket. And I had to go back onto my video and put it in slow motion to find the find the uh, find my phone. Right, so let's just mark that ready for the. We're going to put a tenon on this one, I think. So, yeah, yeah. You might want to sit down for this. Three hundred eighty-seven watching. Wow. <laughs> Three ninety watching. 394. Wow, it's going to be a little in the chat. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Such a good friend, Dale. <laughs> Question How do you decide to go 10 in a mortis? Ask Must Love Wood. I, I generally don't, to be honest. It's it's the case of um, what do I feel like? It's I don't know. It, it, normally I do more is to be honest with you. It kind of defend, depends on what kind of bowl I'm turning at the time. Um, have I locked that down? Yeah, now I have. Yeah, it kind of depends on what type, kind of bowl I'm turning, uh, to be honest with you. So, yeah. So, Doug saying I wouldn't be able to see bubbles this weekend. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Doug. 405 watching, Jamie. Sorry? 405 watching. 412 watching. Blimey. Well, welcome, everybody. Question, which of Do the moderators is the one from Scotland? Scotland? Sorry, mate. That, <laughs> that would be Dale from Maple Tree Shoe. No, wouldn't it be Wayne? Wayne, it'd be Wayne, he's from Scotland. <laughs> oh, the, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a difficult one, isn't it? The one with a Scottish accent <laughs> is Dale, but the one living in Scotland is Wayne.
But I've, I've only lived in Scotland for 34 years, so I'm still classed as an um, incomer. An incomer. Technically yeah. speaking, you lived in Scotland longer than me. I only lived there for 33 years. I think this is a question from Robert uh, Munir. Sorry, I apologize if I got that wrong. Have you ever had a carbide tip break while tunneling? No, never. Never. Emmett from Dead Rise Woodcrafts is asking, which of the moderators is better looking? Me. That depends on what time of night it is. And how many <laughs> bottles of wine? <laughs> well, James Garwood. James Garwood is asking you, Jamie. Do you sell your work anywhere? I don't, unfortunately. Uh, I've never even thought about. It. I've I've donated a lot. Um, I, I'd rather I'd rather give it away, to be honest with you, I, or donate it to charity. Folks, can we make sure that you pre <laughs> this, 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 uh, your this, questions with question? That'd be really sorry. helpful. Sorry, mate. It's absolutely. Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I, I'd, I'd rather just donate it to charity or something like that. If I'm totally honest with you. So, yeah, that, that's that's what I do. This is a hobby for me, so I don't look to profit out of it. All right, so uh, question we, for the moderators. Sorry, go on. Go on. So when you're doing a when you do a mortise, you got to remember you got to undercut it so it sits on the edges of the of the bowl, otherwise it will rock. Okay. So right, go on, mate. You can, you can carry on now. I'm uh, just going to recommend. So Rob, if you feel that there's any risk of what you're about to post being potentially rude, my advice would be just don't do it. Um, I'd hate, they, hate they, to have they, to. They may well be kids in. Exactly right. Uh, Dead Rides Woodcrafts' question Are you raffling these two off, Jamie? Um, I don't know. I guess I could do. No, I'm not raffle. I wouldn't. I'd probably give them away. So, yeah, if, if, uh, if you let me know like 10 minutes early or something, I could do a giveaway, I suppose. Uh, Brian O'Neill has just asked, what kind of other work do you do besides turning balls? So I do scroll saw art. Um, Must love yeah. wood is asking. Square roughing a radius roughing carbide. Sorry? The question from Must Love Woodcraft is, question, square roughing or radius roughing carbides? Square, sure are, are square roughing? Yeah. Yeah, square square is the uh, the rougher. Yeah. Right, I think uh, is that good enough for it? No, that's going to change. Brace yourself, Jamie. Uh, Four hundred and fifty watching. Wow. I'm kind of uh, taken back by that. I don't really know what to say. <laughs> Radio. Uh. It, I don't know, it's a, it's a big question for everybody. Who would be interested in me seeing uh, me doing more lives? Hey, you must have lowered your microphone. We missed the last few words of that sentence. Uh, oh, that's it. My microphone dropped. That's why. Sorry about that. Uh, I said, who would be interested in me doing more lives? Me. Considering this is only my second ever one, so... There's a number of me's out in the chat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, I think I'll let him eighteen. Get the idea? Yeah, I'll get the point now. Yeah, I guess uh, say I better uh, better start doing that then. I guess. Four hundred and seventy watching. Wow. Oh, Rebecca's in. Never saw you come in, Rebecca. Is that That's Mr. Rebecca Groot? Groot. Yeah, Hello, it is. Rebecca. How Nancy on earth are you? Oh, God, now we're getting everybody answering. 
loads of people who I've missed earlier on. Thanks, guys. Seven so far. Remember, folks, if you have a question, make sure you prefix it with what question. And must love Wood is asking a question again. Question clarification: Square rougher with two two degree radius or ninety degree radius? I think it's quite hard to work out. What go again, I must love? I don't, I don't understand the question. Sorry. Yeah, go again. Go again, must love. Two inch. So, question: Square rougher with a Two inch radius or a ninety degree radius. Uh a square rough I don't understand. I still don't understand what you mean. Right. The square rougher it either some of the carbide tips come the square one it comes straight across. So you've got a ninety degree angle on all the points. Oh I and see what you yes, I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, this one's going straight across. Yeah, I do have a I do have a radius um, a radius cutter in the in my um, in my in the drawer. Uh, but yeah, that one goes straight across. That does. Um, I do see benefits to both of them. Um, obviously, if you want a nice crisp edge, um, the 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 one that goes straight across um, is works a hell of a lot better. Obviously. Um, However, the other one is good because if if you're uh, obviously ruffling something out and you're going to the right, um, you, you don't want that corner to catch on anything. So uh, with it being it radius, it will it will just take off where the the, the tip of it is. So yeah, Michael Matthews. Yeah. Michael Matthews sums it up best by saying radius edge or flat edge. Yeah, um, that, yeah. Wood asks, which one do you prefer? I mean, they both have their place, to be honest with you. Um, what one do I prefer? I mean, to be honest, I've, I've only really... Used, I'll keep that square one on there the most, um, if I'm honest with you. Um, it, it It's it's kind of funny, really, because um, me, personally, I use both the circle and the square as roughers, um, depending on... I mean, I use, I use a square one a lot for if, uh, if I've got a bark or things like that to take off um, because it just eats for it. Um, but if I am taking off something uh, like going down the side like this, then often I will change out to because if I want to get down to the final shape and I don't want to dig in, then like I said, I will change off to the radius bit so I don't end up um, taking off any more than I need to. Couple of things for you, Jamie. You've especially just crossed you, the 500 mark. Wow. Thank you very um, much, Tim, you Think of this as the 12 minute warning. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Adri Adrian, the hobby turner, is in the house as well. How are you doing, Adrian? Right. So, so let's, let's, start, let's start rushing now and get this one done. I was asked earlier what my uh, what my biggest accident out here was. You can't rush too fast. <laughs> right. Right. So yeah, let's just uh, let's just reiterate uh, what we were kind of talking about earlier. So well, first of all, this was denatured alcohol that I'm just cleaning off the cleaning off the wood with. Um, yeah. Uh, so there's. Go on, Dale. Dave Robinson is asking a question. Is it an easy wood tool chuck you're using, and is it worth the money they cost? Yes, it is your uh, an easy wood tool chuck, and yes, very much so. It's worth the money. It's excellently uh, built, and it is built like a machine. It's it's heavy. It's very durable, and if someone was to try and trade me in. Tried it, uh, try and trade me for it. I'll, would, I'll would turn them away in a heartbeat. They are fantastic chucks. Absolutely fantastic. Um, Brian Ruthen asks question: Why do you choose a tenon 
on the other ball in a recess on this one. Just something different to show you guys, honestly. Show you two different ways of mounting. No, no specific reason. Barry York's in the house. Hello, Barry. Uh, Doug yeah. Dixon as well. Hello, Doug. Michael Matthews is asking a follow-on question. Easy wood chuck or one-way chuck? Easy wood. Without a shadow of a doubt. Nine no, minutes, no, UP. No, yep, no worries, mate. No worries. Yeah, so let's just uh, let's just reiterate what I was uh, what I was saying earlier. So down in the description, the Easy Wood have got a uh, a raffle one where they're giving away tools and hats and all good stuff like that. Um, so yeah, if you click down the link down in the description, that ends midnight Central Time or six o'clock tomorrow morning if you're in the UK. So be sure you've got plenty of time to enter that um, after before, after the show's end, uh, end and all that good stuff. So, yeah, after all the uh, shows are finished, uh, go click that link and enter to win some good stuff and good luck for that. Uh, all the other links to the other uh, people that are doing this have, are all down in the description as well. So be sure to check out everybody else that's coming up and uh, everybody else that's already been on. So, yeah, all good, 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 good. Question from W. Bradburn. Uh, if Easywood is on their... Well, oh, wait, hold on. I'm going to have to read this carefully now. If Easywood is on, is there an Easywood chuck light enough for midi, mini lathe, one horsepower or less? Um, I think that's one for Chris to answer. Yeah, if Chris and Doug is mm. out there, I mean, I imagine this chuck would be f uh, fine. So I know, uh, I know that I had this chuck on my old lathe, which was a, a, a I think it was a one inch by eight TPI thread. Um, now this this thread is a M thirty three, so I know they do a smaller thread. Um, so I imagine it would be fine. I can't see no reason why not. Five hundred and fifty so, watching. Nice. Welcome everybody. I think you're getting used to it now. I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing this all this five hundred and odd watching, can I put a link into my channel? <laughs> yeah, go on, mate, go for it. Oh, let me do that for you, mate. I've got it right here. Go on, mate. Right, oh, there, there we go. go. Is it, is the there we go. This is a this is a link to Wayne the Wood Tunnels channel, who's one of the co-hosts. Yeah, one of the one of the earworms. He is a uh, he is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the the turnings of the wood. So, so definitely definitely go and check him out. And uh, Wayne, uh, yeah, Wayne does a lot of cool stuff. And uh, Dale, if you want to post your link, he's uh, you no know, Dale's just Dale. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> if you have computer problems he's a man to go to oh yes and he is also the uh, the scroll saw cartoon king yeah that was the man <sighs> right I need to get another Scott Grove sticker that one's Coming off the wall. Scott, get better stickers. Right, we're coming up to five minutes left, GP. Okay. I'm probably not going to have enough time to hollow this out, but we'll see. Oh, did I just knock that camera? I think I did. I think you have, I think you have three minutes to hollow this out. All right, here we go. It's going to be a nice challenge, isn't it? Starting from no. Here we go, then. Five hundred and eighty-two watching. Wow, that's incredible. I'm sure we're going to hit six. All right. Five eighty-six watching. Five ninety-two watching. Five 
597 watching. 607 watching. Well, we hit the 600 easy. Six hundred and ten watching GP. There we go. And that everybody is why the number one hollower is my favourite tool. Right. A couple of questions out of the chat. Um is the cutter round? asks Steve Bowers. Yes, the number one hollower is round, yes. It's a smaller version of the CI two. The number one hollower is a the CI five. So, yeah. Uh, right, I'll uh, question from I'm gonna, Wood. Do you ever use face plates instead of the wormwood screw? If so, when? Uh, yes. Well, I've actually got a, a massive, massive face plate. Um, I've actually got one on the screw to the wall right, oh, right there. But I've also got a, you have a, a massive, massive face. Yeah. yeah, massive, massive face, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I've also got a a, a giant faceplate. Uh, there's a video on my channel where I, I made a 21-inch platter on this lathe. It's not bad for a mini lathe. It done, right, I'm not gonna, I don't think I've got time to finish that one off, unfortunately. So I'm going <laughs> to switch cameras. So, Wayne, you've, Wayne, you've still you have, got your... You have uh, three minutes. Three minutes to go. <laughs> oh, maybe I have then. <laughs> right, Wayne, I'm coming for you. <laughs> where's the sandpaper right, where's 626 in JP that'll fit in there yeah it will right here we go and that's why you use power sanding and that's why you use power sanding <laughs> Right. Two what minutes left. Out? Two minutes left. Right, I need to quickly do something. Come on, right. sand faster. Do we have a high-speed version of Ultra Crit? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think I've got a high-speed uh, version of me sanding with my hands like this because it will burn my fingers. I'll have no skin left. Just be careful. <laughs> Right, let's use that thing that Jim Owen was talking about. I feel like a barber now brushing <laughs> someone's neck off. Right, let's, right, don't need sand and sealer and that sort of stuff. We'll just put the Yorkshire grit on. Sorry, Wayne. Yeah, slap it on there. 6.25. Watching. Right, here we go. <clears throat> if you put enough Yorkshire grit on, you don't need sand and sealer. There we go. You read my mind. One minute. Fifth, sorry, 50 seconds left. <laughs> 40 <laughs> seconds left. Done. Next. 28 watching. Right, everybody. Uh, while I'm doing this, I just want to thank everybody for coming along. It's been immensely fun. Let's quickly change the camera. Uh, yeah, thank you, everybody, for coming along. It's been absolutely excellent having you all here. Uh, and until the next time I do a live, there's the, there's the bowls that we've done today. One, this one is Sapidi, this one's Paduk. So, yeah, uh, I will do another live soon. Uh, make sure to head over to Scott Gross' channel. He's on right now. Uh, Zach Higgins right afterwards, then Daryl from Dreadnought Woodshop, and then back on to Carl for the finale of the Maker Virtual Live Maker Fair. So, thank you all once again. 
Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.